Think about the worst moment you've ever had. When you lost your temper and lost control for a moment. I highly doubt, unless you suffer from amnesia, that there's a single person watching this video who hasn't had this happen in one way or another at some point during your life. But fortunately for us, a friend probably threw our drunk asses in the car and whisked us away to safety. Nowadays, when we get together, we never speak of this night, right? It's a thing of the past, a distant, distant, distant memory. Now imagine that same moment being filmed in black and white with no sound or context and then being broadcast to the world. What you did was terrible. It was wrong. It was bad. You should be punished. You're just as remorseful as you was before. You're ready to own up to your crimes, pay the price and move on with your life. That'll never happen because now no matter what you did leading up to and what you did after, you will forever be defined by this one moment your worst moment ray rice's backstory sounds like the start of a folktale dude was born in new rochelle new york in 1987 during a damn blizzard when he was only one years old his dad was killed in a drive-by shooting then a couple years after that his aunt passed at the age of 37 her son ray's cousin sean who was still a kid himself now didn't have anywhere to live so he moves in with Ray and Ray's mom. Now, Sean was 10 years older than Ray, so he kind of became that father figure for him. But unfortunately, when Sean turned 21, he died in a car crash. So yeah, by the time he was 11 years old, Ray Rice had already lost two dads before he even hit puberty. By the time Ray was 15, he was working at a barber shop to help his mom pay the bills, and that's actually around the time he met his future wife, Janae. Back then, it was puppy love. They was just kids, and I'm pretty sure they had dreams of having an adult relationship and one day being rich and famous. But if only they knew how things would eventually play out. Ray put together a great life of minimal mistakes up until this point, but this slip up was one of epic proportion. One of those that most men could never recover from. And while a whole lot of people feel this one mistake caused Ray Rice everything, the man himself would beg to differ. This is what happened to former Baltimore Ravens running back Ray Rice, a controversial topic that is finally time for us to tackle. So, without further ado, y'all already know what time it is, man. Two to one. Yeah, no quitter, cause I'm a go, I'm a go, I'm a go getter. All right, bros, as always, before we jump in, we have to thank the sponsors of today's video. Manscaped. So Christmas is coming and gone and now that you're done taking care of everybody else, it's time to look out for yourself and grab the Manscaped all-in-one performance package kit to make sure your grooming is on point. We got their bread and butter product right here with the Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof trimmer with the advanced skin safe tech so no nicks no cuts. Also included in the performance package kit we got ball deodorant and ball toner next up we get into the detail here you got your weed whacker which is a nose and ear trimmer plus the shears 2.0 for your fingernails and toes and even though christmas is passed for a limited time when you cop the kit you're gonna get two free gifts and you know them late christmas gifts always hit the hardest we're talking the shed travel bag and the manscape anti-chafing box of briefs so if you want to get hooked up with the all-in-one performance package kit go to manscape.com today and save 20 percent off plus free international shipping and don't forget they include the two free gifts when you click my link in the description thanks again to manscape for sponsoring the video without further ado let's get it as you could probably guess during his high school days ray rice was a cheat code he never lost more than one game in any year of his varsity football career this is probably because he would have days like october 24 2004 on that day ray carried the ball 42 times and ran for 462 yards in a game like i said before dude was a cheat code but that does not mean he wasn't human. In an interview, he recalled running hot water with Epsom salt, ready to soak a war-torn body after a tough game. And legend has it, he told his mom in that moment, Ma, I'm going to the league. I gotta make it. I'll be glad when I could tell you, you ain't gotta work no more. Okay, quick fun fact that's pretty dope. Ray's mom would often have to work multiple jobs in order to take care of them. That's why Ray was also working at the barbershop, right? But her main line of work and the one she was actually passionate about was working with special needs kids. It's kind of ironic that he said she wouldn't have to work anymore, but even after he made it to the league, she still chose to work that same job because it's something that was important to her. Doesn't have much to do with the story, but I just thought that was some feel-good information. So boom, there you go. Ray attended Rutgers and made an 
impact from day one. He helped lead the program to their first winning season in 11 years. Dude was a workhorse at Rutgers. As a freshman, he carried the ball nearly 200 times for 1,120 yards and five touchdowns. Over the next two years, he shattered all the program's records. As a sophomore, he rushed for 1,800 yards and 20 touchdowns all while maintaining an average of 5.4 yards per carry. Then in 2007, as a junior, he went crazy rushing for over 2,000 yards while scoring 24 touchdowns. That actually gave him more rushing yards than four out of the five running backs that was drafted ahead of him. At the NFL Combine, he showed well, measuring in at just under 200 pounds while only standing 5'8". Dude showed supreme explosiveness with a 4.4740 and a 39 and a half inch vert. But even that coupled with his production in college wasn't enough to get him drafted in the first round. And I can't lie, I kind of get it because that 2008 running back class was actually pretty nice, bro. The running back draft order went like this. Darren McFadden, Jonathan Stewart, Felix Jones, Rashad Mendenhall, Chris Johnson, Matt Forte, and then finally, Ray Rice was taken in the second round, 55th overall by the Baltimore Ravens. So again, some really good running backs in that draft class, and Jamal Charles, maybe the most talented of all of these cats, wasn't actually taken until 18 picks later after Ray Rice, so, you know. After a decent rookie showing, Ray Rice broke out in 2009 during his second year with the Ravens. Quite a few firsts that year for Ray. He rushed for over a thousand yards for the first time in his career, made the Pro Bowl for the first time in his career, and started his first playoff game that year as well. So for the next several years, the Ravens continued to make deep playoff runs and Ray was always a key contributor for that squad. He rushed for over a thousand yards in five straight seasons and became increasingly dangerous in the past game, averaging 61 receptions and about 500 receiving yards per year. That's a crazy amount of production from one dude at one position. In 2012, those deep playoff runs finally ended with the Lombardi Trophy when the Ravens won Super Bowl 47, aka the Harbaugh. Things were very different back then as both Colin Kaepernick and Ray Rice had yet to reach the moments that would eventually, whether fairly or unfairly, define their careers. Kaepernick was a red-hot quarterback who had just led his team to the Super Bowl, and Ray Rice was a media darling. But a lot of people feel the whole Ray Rice media darling thing was by design. It's pretty well documented that Ray Rice was extremely image conscious. He cared a lot about how people saw him, so he'd do the same thing that we all do on social media every single day. He highlighted the very best sides of himself and then cropped out the rough edges. The narrative Ray created framed him as a larger than life yet lovable teddy bear. From the milk mustache to his anti-bullying campaign, Ray Rice wanted to make sure he was seen in a good light. This is something that could come across as negative, but if you're honest with yourself, look, it makes sense. If you're a public figure that's gonna be seen by millions and millions of people, people that you never met and will actually never really know you, would you really trust those people to properly judge your character based on what they see through a screen and these little interview clips that they might get? You probably wouldn't, so I don't really see how you can frown upon a person wanting to kind of steer that narrative in the direction that they wanted to go I, I don't blame him for that and with that said i can promise you the good deeds he was doing the people he was doing them for they didn't give a damn whether he was doing it for his brand or out of the kindness of his heart the stuff just needed to get done ray would visit sick kids in the hospital and if they had another favorite player on the team he'll call up that player from the kids room so that they could talk to their idol again this was all well before the incident way before there was anything for him to cover up or make up for. And reading about some of the things he was doing, I couldn't help but make the connection between his mom and like her kind of lifelong work with special needs kids. I don't think it's unreasonable to assume that some of that probably rubbed off on Ray. So yeah, even though it's a little irrelevant and we damn sure can't prove it, I think a lot of this was just done out of the kindness of his heart, to be real. I think Ray's a good dude at the core of him, though clearly, not a perfect one, we'll get into it. But regardless of why he was doing it, this whole kind of good guy persona really created a narrative around him. A narrative so strong that he was once voted least likely player to be arrested by fans. And his narrative and kind of persona he built up put him on a pedestal that there was no way in hell he was gonna be able to balance atop 
forever now as we move into the second half of this video and really kind of get into the grimy parts of this story the thing i want you to keep in the back of your mind is something that really can stuck with me kind of throughout this is that no matter how wholesome narratives can be extremely dangerous see when you tell a good story people fall in love with the main protagonist he becomes a role model an idol a hero and then the sequel comes out like I mentioned earlier in the story, Ray and Janae met when they were kids. They've been friends for a long time, but didn't get romantic until late in Ray's college career. He asked her to move to Baltimore with him once he got drafted. And her parents, who Ray was actually incredibly close with, were actually super against the idea. But again, Ray had a very close relationship with her family and even eventually started calling her dad, dad like you know what i'm saying like that was his pop of course he had already lost his actual father and a father figure so it makes sense that he kind of sought out that older male like mentor if you will anyway i digress her parents eventually agree to it janae moves out to baltimore with ray things are pretty cool for a while i'm pretty sure the problems were already there they were already present but they had not really revealed themselves yet or hadn't really like kind of built up to that boiling point as they got older and Ray had more and more success on the field, things started to change rapidly between the couple. By Janae's own admission, they had kind of developed a contentious relationship as she kind of struggled with the fact that she didn't feel like a top priority in Ray's life. For Ray, he was a young man, very ambitious, and he's trying to get to the top of his sport, so he's very career driven. At this point, this is a, a point of contention in many relationships. This is not unique. If you're in your 30s and married like me, you probably can empathize with this situation. You've experienced this in some form at some point in your life or at some point in your marriage or relationship. But in order to get past this, it takes time and two mature people who actually want to solve the problem. And, you know, over the course of years, y'all will probably work out a, a workable balance. And while empathy allows me to understand where Janae is coming from, it's got to be said that this is a sacrifice made by the families of pretty much every great athlete and coach. Getting to the top of a competitive field takes a major time commitment, which I don't think is news to anyone and pro sports is one of the toughest fields to get to the top of becoming a great amongst the best players the sport has to offer takes an unbelievable time commitment that's why every hall of fame speech always includes an apology to the family for time spent dedicated to the game i'm not trying to say this is easy to deal with by any means i'm just saying this is something that's pretty common when it comes to great athletes or great men really in any field with that said, Ray himself did not make matters any better. If you Ray and you know you're ambitious and you know you're going to be spending a lot of time putting into your crap, trying to be at the top of it, you're going to have to find some compromises and figure out a way to make your spouse feel valued and important. By his own admission, at that time, Ray was doing pretty much the opposite. Back then, anytime Janae would express wanting some alone time or express the fact that she wanted to be higher on the priority list, Ray would then refer to her as dream killer which is honestly like an energy that why would you even attach that to your woman though you feel what i'm saying like you you don't want to do that that's a mistake but sitting and listening to the two talking interviews over the last few years they admit that their relationship was verbally and emotionally abusive at times and they didn't try to make this excuse i'm just saying this dude they was young as hell all right when you young this is the type of stuff you do also they were adamant that while yes it was verbally and emotionally abusive at times never physical outside of this one incident yeah it's time back then ray's commitment to the sport showed on the field dude was dominant for a time but his lack of commitment to his relationship continued to drive a wedge between him and janae an even bigger wedge was drawn in 2012 when their daughter was born and ray actually admits to not being a whole lot of help during that time here's what he had to say i get home i'm spent there's no time to talk i got practice the next day it got to the point where if she had an issue i would basically just go silent there wasn't a lot of yelling screaming or nothing i would just wake up go to practice then game day gets here i rush for three touchdowns the family's over at the house she still got the problem she's thinking about and i think i scored three touchdowns today everything's all right that's funny to hear and most dudes have probably done this exact same thing outside the three touchdowns and you can't judge them because it's tough to balance career goals and relationship goals i've done a decent amount of reading up on this stuff over the past few years and people in their 20s almost never 
have this down. Like this is something you usually don't get down until later in life when you better establish, you know? But for Ray and Janae, before they ever got to that point, things boiled over, Valentine's Day, 2014. So now that the two were engaged, Janae wanted to do something romantic with her fiance for Valentine's Day. Ray decides instead to plan a group event on Valentine's Day. All the older dudes is like, oh, like they know he's messing up right now. So they drive three hours up to Atlantic City to meet up with a group of people on Valentine's Day. A few hours later, they're in Atlantic City. They're both drunk out of their minds. Once the alcohol starts flowing, the filters go down. And next thing you know, they're in a huge argument just displaying all of their relationship problems for everybody to hear. Random fun fact, Ray was actually on a cleanse. So he was a super lightweight during this time because he had been detoxing. So it didn't take much drink for him to just be out of there. They continue to argue back and forth, getting louder and louder. Janae at one point gets up, putting her hand in his face. It's really escalating. And my question is, if this was a group thing that Ray planned, and that's what kind of helped this thing to go ahead and boil it over, because that's what the articles say. If that's the truth, where the hell is the rest of the group? And why they not breaking this up? Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what's going on with that. That's weird. Anyway, at one point it gets so bad that the image conscious Ray is like, all right, this can't happen here. He gets up, he leaves, but he stands by the elevator. So eventually Janae walks up because when she leaves, it obviously she's gonna go to the elevator. So when she comes out, of course, altercation continues. Ray made what they would later refer to as a very vulgar comment. Then Janae stepped onto the elevator and Ray followed. This is where things get unbelievably ugly. Inside the elevator, they continue to kind of scuffle. Ray says something that was kind of taunting her a bit. Then he backs up. She sees Red, rushes in, and then it happens. Ray loses it for a moment and hits her with a blow to the face. The blow knocks her off balance and as she falls, she hits her head on the handrail in the elevator. After this, she was out cold and unconscious and it took a little while before she came back too. And probably the most disturbing part of the tape is Ray basically dragging her out of the elevator. It seriously looks like something out of a horror movie. Back in 2013, during this anti-bullying campaign, Ray had a quote that really haunts him today. He said, I truly feel like it's a crime if you back somebody into a corner and they feel defenseless. Once again, Ray's old persona comes back to bite him as that's exactly what this looks like. And look, bro, this ain't political, so I'm not on the feminist side. I'm not on like the he-man woman hater side. I know those guys will say, well, she backed him into a corner. If, if you telling me you think Ray Rice felt defenseless against his wife who didn't have a single way Weapon, who is clearly bigger stronger and more powerful like get out of here with that that's bs bro this whole situation is 1000 percent inexcusable i think this is a good time to say that the way i was brought up bro you never put your hands on a woman that's some weak shit that i don't and will never respect with that said if this happens once i don't believe you're irredeemable because you made a terrible 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 mistake i do believe in second chances and i do believe good people make bad decisions and make bad mistakes sometimes. I feel like that's an inherent part of being human. But the other part of being human is actually striving to be better. So just in case you can't tell with how I'm conveying the story, I just wanna let people know exactly where I stand on this situation. Now let's move on. Originally, only one half of the tape leaked, the aftermath. It looked really bad, but without the first part of the footage, it wasn't enough to completely unravel Ray's carefully woven persona. The incident was originally called, quote, a very minor physical altercation, and it was pretty much treated like that for a while. See, the full tape didn't surface until a full seven months later. Ray and Janae had gotten married during that seven months, a move that some people felt like was just them trying to get out in front of the media storm. And then also this could help prevent Janae from having to testify against Ray in court. So that's one way to look at it. The other way would be maybe after this terrible, terrible incident, they knew that even this wasn't going to break them apart and it was ready to go through everything that was going to have to go through to stay together as the world tried to tear them apart. So they just decided, you know what, let's go ahead and get married right now. We're going to stand together. We're going to get through this. That's just another way to look at it. You know, now before the full tape dropped, the NFL actually suspended Ray Rice for the first two games of the 2014 season. Roger Goodell maintains that he asked the police department who was handling the case for anything pertinent. And he assumed that that was probably a second tape, but he says he never received or was notified of any 
other footage. He went on to say he's not sure where TMZ gets their sources from, but the NFL relies on law enforcement. All right, and they ain't bring the information. So he kind of threw the blame. <laughs> he kind of threw the blame real smooth though. You know, when TMZ dropped the full tape, Ray Rice's life changed in an instant. His good guy persona now played against him as people felt they were fooled. They were lied to. And he created this energy of like, oh, so he was just trying to hide who he really was the whole time. That's why he was doing this. You know what I'm saying? This goes back to my earlier point that that whole good guy persona in this situation actually ended up playing against him. It only heightened the backlash because people were so shocked. Ray Rice was now public enemy number one and the NFL couldn't have anything to do with him. So they suspended him, again, this time for the rest of the season. Then to take it a step further, the Ravens actually terminated his contract so he was waived. Now, even if he was reinstated by the league, he wouldn't have a team to go to. And let's be real, he was an aging running back who was coming off his worst year of his career and a hip injury. So this was always going to be the end. Like nobody was going to sign him after this. During the aftermath, Ray hired a PR specialist, held a press conference, and did the usual dance we see from athletes, politicians, and celebrities. Unfortunately for Ray, the press conference didn't exactly go over well. It came across as a tone deaf, kind of selfish attempt to quickly restore his image so that he could just continue his career without actually addressing the issue. It was way too soon, and Ray later admitted this himself. He said at that point he was more focused on saving his career than saving his marriage and he grew to resent that version of himself because of it we all know there are other guys in the league who have committed crime just as bad or even worse as what ray rice did the issue is the tape like again i, I hate to keep saying it but narratives bro narratives are everything and the fact that that tape exists and came out nothing you say after this is ever gonna tell a more powerful story this is a lasting image that you're probably not gonna be able to ever get past the nfl understood that and once that tape dropped there was pretty much no chance dude was ever gonna get another carry in the league ray rice lived a long life of tragedies and triumph but his biggest mistake was caught on video and circulated for the whole world to see. And for an aging running back, there was no recovering from that. He and his wife were young, and I know nobody watching this video has ever been in a bad place in their relationship. Just so happened with Ray and Janae, their moment was really dark, and then on top of that, it was broadcast for the world to see. And I gotta say this, man, hats off to them for staying together it's been what like six seven years and we all know janae had a perfect opportunity to leave and you know dedicate her life to making his miserable like some women do that and then their life ends up being miserable as well then that collective misery rubbed off on the kids she decided to see all the good things that ray rice is and not judge him on his worst moment can we as a society do the same thing Today, they've got a couple of kids together and through hard work on their relationship and counseling, they figured it out, man. Relationships are hard. People make mistakes. And if you're famous, that mistake could cost you your career and your livelihood. Fortunately for Ray, he won a grievance against the NFL for wrongful termination. The reason being because they punished him twice for this same act, which is illegal. Today, he's become an advocate against domestic violence and seems to have found uh, like a bigger calling in his life. And he seems happy, bro. He seems like he's in a good space. So that's good. After the incident, it was nearly a full year before Ray would come back out of the house. He was embarrassed about the shame that he brought on his family and the pain he caused the woman he loved. But he slowly found small pockets of people who accepted him and were willing to give him a second chance, including a workout class with a bunch of stay-at-home moms and dads who invited him in with open arms. After being in locker rooms for so long and now basically being exiled, I'm pretty sure that community and camaraderie for him went a long way. I didn't go extremely deep into Janae's side of the story as this video is about the career of Ray Rice, but I gotta once again send a shout out to her for sticking with Ray through this mistake and keeping her family together. Ray talked a lot about how much he hated himself after this incident. And let's be honest, if Janae doesn't stay by his side and keep his kids in his life and do all of the things that she was able to do, he could have gone down an extremely dark 
dark path, but fortunately, both of them together were able to go on a path of healing and today, they're in a better place than they ever were before. He's finally kind of starting to make appearances again and fans are giving him a warm welcome, so, you know, that's kind of nice to see. And even though Ray Rice was only afforded one mistake before he had nearly everything taken away from him, if you listen to the man speak, he'll tell you. Somewhere down the line, everybody was saying, does he deserve a second chance for football and this, this, that, and the other. I actually got my second chance Absolutely. right here.